Alexis, this is clearly a Jaws episode. Yes. Very, very quickly we find that out. That much is made obvious right off the bat. But our guest stars are both sci-fi people. Oh. So I saw yeah, so that the, we, we do have like a female and I saw that she was in the show Leverage, but I didn't really know either of our big guest stars. So I, I learned that from the trivia because I remember the show Leverage, but I didn't watch it on the regular. Mm -hmm. However, she is very familiar to me from Star Trek Voyager. Now, I'm not going to try and guess her character's name because I cannot remember at this moment. <laughs> um, and I wish we had fans who could skewer me over this because I'm ashamed. Yeah. I should know. Yeah. If you, if but... <laughs> you know and you are listening, feel free to tell us how terrible we are at to the blueberry podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> our other guest star who, who, who i didn't read i wrote down their names in episode like when we get to them mm -hmm. so i know jerry ryan is our is our lady familiar lady and the other guy i'll say his name later but he is a regular from battlestar galactica the the modern series oh. because there was an old series right um and so i recognize both of these people from sci-fi television and i was very <laughs> excited but i was like but they're in the jaws episode yeah. okay i mean okay. i guess i get it <laughs> i guess i get why those two things would connect do we actually have like any super sci-fi episodes we have like some ghost episodes and some mummy episodes but we had the comic book episode yeah i don't, I know. don't i mean we had aliens well aliens <laughs> the the abduction people Oh, yeah. Shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> Shenanigans. I, this podcast has messed me up, Kay. I don't remember the actual names of episodes anymore. I just remember what we called the podcast, which I guess doesn't really mean it's messed me up. I mean, maybe it just means that it's made me awesome. <laughs> we remember the quotes that we remembered the most. <laughs> but I know oh, we man. have a, yeah. lot of, a lot of Jaws references to talk about. I have never seen jaws or any of its sequels so i didn't catch many of them but okay i know you caught at least a few more than me because at least you've seen the movie first one i didn't bother with the sequels i'm sure my brother did because he likes trash movies but <laughs> i i went classic and that's it and so i did catch some but i'm sure there are lots that we missed as usual i'm excited so email us if if we miss anything <laughs> shall we start the episode <laughs> it's showtime This is to, to the, the blueberry. blueberry. I'm Alexis with a bad mic, and I am a real life Gus. I'm Kaylee, and I am the real life Sean. And together we make up a real life best friend duo who decided to do a psych rewatch podcast because we needed a fancy reason to talk to one another every week, and this podcast is kind of killing it. It's facilitated a lot of good, like pre and post episode catch-ups. Yes. Plus we get to discuss our favorite show and rewatch that constantly. So. Psych. Love it. <laughs> this episode is season four, episode 15. And the title has a curse word in it. And I don't love saying curse words. So Kaylee. The head, the tail, the whole damn episode. I don't know what that's a reference to, but I feel like it is. That's what I said. And there's no fun fact about it. Hmm. So... Okay. Uh, let us know what we missed. Email us. <laughs> we start the episode in 1989 and uh, little baby Sean is scared to go into the water because he's recently seen Jaws 4. Henry says that is the worst sequel ever made and um, it, it's not realistic to their situation at all. Sharks don't just attack people. There are so many reasons why a shark must at might attack a human. And those variables have to line up just right. And, you know, all the all the fanfare about shark attacks, it's very misleading. But um, Sean is worried because he's about to get into the water and most shark attacks are in three feet of water or less. Well, that's where the people are. So that's a skewed sample, says Henry. <laughs> that is a wonderful line. <laughs> so good. Little baby Sean's like, well, do I look for the fin? No, no, that's just a movie thing. They, there's a reason they call them the silent killers. I thought that was hypertension. Henry says, either way, instead of saying, 
I've, I've heard, heard it, it both, both ways. ways. Can we have a moment of silence for the missed opportunity? I don't know. Um, I don't know why Henry is doing this, but he really wants Sean to get into the water. Is it just like a, I want you to overcome your fears thing? Or why, why do you, I don't understand why that's such a big deal. Honestly, I probably would have been more worried about that if I wasn't so distracted by the fact that we are clearly not at a California coast. No. Like, I was not that distantly in the Pacific Northwest, and I went to the coast in, like, northern Oregon and southern Washington, and that is what it looked like. The big driftwood, the not sand of it all. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's Yeah, that's what I kept seeing. Like, why? It, this doesn't look like a California beach. This looks like uh, like the side of a lake. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the vibe. And there weren't waves. Yeah. Like, not that there are always waves at the ocean. I mean, even at my beaches, that's not really always a thing. But yeah, it was just, it didn't look right and I was distracted. So I didn't notice so much. Um, that he was very insistent on Sean getting in the water for whatever reason. It just seems so off to me. Like, why are you pushing this, Henry? Why is this such a big deal? If if little baby Sean's afraid to get in the water, like, respect his fears. Come on. I don't know. The end... I think it was like, I think Sean is like normally a swimmer, but like all of a sudden he was like, you know, that kid thing of like, I watched the scary movie. The end of the scene, we kind of see, like, the view from the water. Like, something's peeking its eyes out over the water. Which is very much more like alligator than shark, if I do say so myself. But it was a yeah. kind of a good move. I, I, it visually looked really cool, but I don't, still doesn't make sense. It's very, like, in the first scene of Jaws, when we're watching the girl who's being... The first scene takes place at night. A girl goes skinny dipping. Drunk guy passes out on the beach while she's waiting in the water for him. And she's being pulled under by the shark. Oh. And so it's on, like, the camera's on the surface of the water watching her head being, like, like dragged under a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that explains it. We are uh, in the present day and we see a fin, although Henry clearly told us that it was only in the movies. But we see a fin headed towards um, a boat where there's a person... Nighttime chumming. Listen, listen, Linda. Why <laughs> would you chum the water at night? I mean, I, I, we find out later why, but like, come on. So the whole dorsal fin being a warning before a shark attack, that part is cinema only. Like when they do come up to the surface to like check on stuff, like they're, they, you know, their dorsal fin crests the water. But when they attack, they usually attack from below. Right. So that's why, yeah. Again, we get that view from the water. Um, the guy's still throwing stuff in, and the shark gets the fish, then gets the guy's arm, and then pulls the guy into the water. Yeah, we don't really get to see the guy. He's just kind of like an older gentleman. I wrote, old man, shark attack. Next day, there's a body on the beach. Lassiter and Juliet are there, and Lassiter is in a hurry to solve this case because he needs to uh, make sure that he figures it out before that. That being Sean and Gus showing up. So he radios up and tells McNabb to like hold them and stall them because they can't come down yet. Sean's, <laughs> Sean is up there and he goes, oh, come on, really, Buzz? This is the thanks I get for getting you a cat and finding you a guy to remove your Baja Men tattoo. So I just wrote, little boy cat. <laughs> <laughs> Gus and he, and is McNabb, ready to go. to his credit, is very like, sorry, guys. Yeah. Gus is like, hey, I'm out of here. I'm done. And Sean said, oh, I get it. I know why you don't want to go down there. I know how you feel about dead things. First of all, there's a person down there. Can we put a little respect? <laughs> um, <laughs> but Gus is fully in denial. And he's like, you know what? I'm turning over a new leaf. I've seen everything. From now on, you can call me Guts. Gus? Guts. Gus, you keep, that's your name. Guts. Uh, that's too close to Gus. Just kind of, yeah, too close. So he's like, you know what? Fine. Call me Old Ironside. There's a reference here that I didn't get. Michael Ironside? I'm guessing he's an athlete, but I did not look it up. Followed by, <laughs> okay, how about Old Iron Stomach? Sean's not going to call him that. Let's no. be real. But potential um, title name, although I don't think Kaylee and I have decided on it. Title, or I've decided that for the title name, but it would have been a good one. Hmm. Lassie's like, I'm so, going to do it. 
I'm I'm gonna Joel figure says it out. You can't solve this in four minutes. And then Henry, nope, and then Lassiter sees that there's some sort of piercing in the skin that looks kind of different from all of the other shark bites. He goes, that's it. That's a knife wound. Uh I'm going to do it. Are you ready? (laughs) Today I'm going to out Spencer Spencer. (laughs) I wrote that down. Juliet kind of knows that um, whatever Lassiter does, it's not going to be good. But Lassiter's response is disappointing to say the least he's like if you don't uh, get on board i'd like to invite you in the nicest way possible to shut it can i just say i used this in real life last week (laughs) (laughs) after the first time i watched this and i was just saying it as an aside to a co-worker but it was it was very funny in real life too that's wonderful (laughs) juliet's face is a face of both anger shock and disappointment There's an impromptu sort of press conference. And then Lassiter announces this man was murdered while taking off his sunglasses very much like Caruso from CSI Miami. Sean's face is both shocked and impressed. Sean is excited, but um, the reporters just kind of make fun of him. They laugh at him. Juliet like steps away like, I don't want to be part of this. They're like, well, what about all those from this narrative? Yeah, what about all those shark bites? Okay, I wrote these people suck. Like they've never heard of a cover up of a murder before. There are references to Lassie being so dumb that he can't spell his own name. There are questions about the shark's alibi, the shark's jury, and whether or not he can get a fair trial from his peers. Um, but Sean, like or you said, need to select the jury from the aquarium. Yes. Sean is all about it. That ends with like a like a fist to chest and then the AOK symbol. You know that symbol well. I do. And then we get a full credits. Full credits, yeah. And then we go to the Santa Barbara Police Department and they're holding a paper called the Santa Barbara Courier, uh, which is completely fictional. <laughs> there is no Santa Barbara Courier. <laughs> Headline is Detective Dipstick at it again. First of all, What do they mean again? When was the first Detective Dipstick? I was wondering that as well. And I was thinking there is an episode where I know Lassiter gets made fun of in the media, but I don't know if it's that newspaper or not. And I think it was just like, just a way to make it sound snappy. Yeah. Detective Dipstick is stupid wrong. It is not like, oh, here goes this guy. (laughs) Like, so. Lassiter's response is, Juliet, why did you not stop me? I was too busy accepting my invitation to shut it. Oh, sorry um, about that. <laughs> so Juliet's just like, it's fine. We'll just solve the case. ID the body. That's number one. And Lassiter is very down on himself. He's very like, I can't even do that. I'm the worst detective ever. We find out that no one is missing locally or statewide, statewide that mis- matches this description. But Sean and Gus do come in, and Sean wants Lassie to sign the paper, although he... Oh, Mr. Dipstick. <laughs> he copywrote that name. Yeah, it, it, Lassiter is insisting it's libel or, or slander, and Sean is like, it's also copyright infringement, because I registered this name six months ago. Gus says that's true. He also registered Officer Whoopsie. Don't worry, you get 5% of any action figure money when Hasbro comes on board. Lassiter blames Sean for... Everything. He says, all of this is your fault. You got all up in my head. Sean's like, no, bro, you're on the right track. Um, Gus uh, would agree, but Sean says thinks it's enough. Oh. Sean says, I wouldn't last five minutes in your head. <laughs> Gus thinks it might have been an ape attack. It's never an ape attack. It will be. Mark my words. That's very Edgar Allan Poe, I'm just saying. <laughs> Sean is very um... proud of Lassiter. Okay, so here's the thing with this episode. Sean is being so obviously not psychic by te- essentially trying to help teach Lassie to do what he does, mm-hmm. like be a better cop, notice things, and 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 keep the pieces that don't fit this little orderly box-checking bullcrap that Lassie usually does. Like, keep those in mind. Those are important clues. Like, you have to follow the evidence. And if something doesn't fit, you've got to jump on that. And so he actually says in this moment, you saw the knife wound, no? Lassiter's, like, he's just giving his crap away. <laughs> Lassiter's very much like, 
listen, I don't believe in your method. Um, I don't know why you think it would work. And Sean and Gus were like, um, have we not proved that the method works? I was like, for the past four years, how do you think we've stayed in business? Sean's like, this is just how this goes. Like... You say it. Yeah. Everyone thinks you're crazy, thinks you're incompetent. You should probably color your sideburns. And Gus goes, truth. We're one in the same. We're comrades now. We're chassis. We're chassis now. <laughs> We're Charlton. We're Spencer. Last year's out. <laughs> he says, oh my God, and leaves. <laughs> Jules says, this is your fault. Make no mistake. And Sean's like, you know what? I've heard that but I'm still trying to figure out how. Juliet is like, I don't care. Uh, we're going to see the corner. Let's go. Um, sweet. I love that guy. It's Woody. And Woody cannot start talking. Not until Sean gets there. Okay, we can begin. He's like, <laughs> literally says, I was told to wait. Sean comes <laughs> in, he's like, all right, we may begin. <laughs> Gus is not being old iron stomach. He is trying very obviously not to gag. Sean calls him tin tummy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the guy is wearing an expensive watch and they haven't been able to get an ID because they can't get any fingerprints because he has no fingers left. The dental records also don't match. Um, and he has the remnants of a belt on, which means that there was probably a wallet but they don't have the wallet. It's likely still in the shark. How is that an if then situation? Belt equals wallet? Um, I think maybe the assumption was if he was in the water on purpose, he would have taken off his belt and taken out his wallet. But because ah. he had on a belt, it was likely an accident. So he probably accidentally still had his wallet. That's what I tracked. Okay, that is so smart. I was just like, I don't understand <laughs> the, the conclusion. Um, so anyway, need to find the shark before they're digested. Lassie kind of uh, backpedals on whether or not that was actually a stab wound, but Sean just like- I wrote that up. too. How did, we both wrote backpedaling. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Sean is pestering him not to give up. Woody says, actually the wound you're indicating as possibly a knife wound is intriguing. I cannot rule out, nor can I really say either way for certain, that it isn't a knife wound, but it would be a blade very like a shark tooth. It's jaggy. It, it's jaggedy, but different than others. Um, it would have some of the same characteristics as shark's teeth. All the while, Woody is drawing an image of what he thinks this knife might be. But he's drawing it on the man's abdomen. The dead guy, <laughs> the corpse, y'all. And then he stops himself and then he's like, Good God, what am I doing? This is half a man. <laughs> Sean's basically like, no, 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 no. That's fine. That's, uh, this is great. So, <laughs> Lassiter, <laughs> if you're ever tired of being wrong, maybe double down on this, like, this idea that you're right with your instincts. Sean is like the perfect hype man for Lassiter in this episode. It's a very much like not gaslighting. What, what's that called? Green lighting? It's very much a green lighting situation. Oh, 1000%. He's like, dude, we beat you to the punch every time. You're on the right track. Finally, follow through. Don't like recede back into like the dim detective trope. Lassie takes the bait. He needs a boat. He needs some fishermen. They are going to find this shark and find the rest of this body. And Juliet's like, so we're back to murder now? Lassiter tells her to shut it. You say that again, I shoot you. Yeah, girl. He's all pumped though, and Sean's like, that's the spirit, man. You're back on the crazy crane. Crazy crane. <laughs> You're back on the crazy <laughs> train. You want to know how Sean, I do it next? I wrote that Sean, and in aside to Gus, was like, do my theories always sound that insane? And Gus is like, sometimes insaner. <laughs> Sean fist bumps Woody. They do an explosion. And then Woody... Everybody leaves. Realizes he's drawn on a human. And the man licks his finger to rub his it His gloved off. finger, but still. Yeah. He had been touching the body. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Woody is a crazy person and I love him so much. But nobody was there to witness that, so... <laughs> We're at the dock. Lassie and Juliet are seeing fishermen everywhere. 
and they find out that there has been a ten thousand dollar reward for the capture of the shark by the mayor like who doesn't inform the police department at all that's he's a psycho he's unhinged who elected this man yeah what's the point like why Um, it just doesn't make sense but they see some guy with dynamite and another guy with a shotgun and then all of a sudden the camera does this crazy swing over to sean and gus who are just standing on the pier watching the madness eating corn dogs Sean Luke Lasseter is trying to rent a boat when they walk inside and the guy where they can who they can usually rent the boat from is like dude there's no more boats everyone's out looking for this shark this actor's name is Michael Hogan and he is our guest star I call him OG short for old guy throughout this entire episode because the man has white hair that- like that's just what I wrote I believe his name is either William Tanner or Tanner William but I end up calling him Tanner Throughout the bulk of the episode. The character, yeah. Yeah. Um, Tanner goes, you're worse than that guy in the paper. That detective. And then Sean screams from outside, dipstick! Uh, and Lasseter yeah. screams, shut it! <laughs> or not another word! He goes, not another word! <laughs> <laughs> Juliet has secured them a police boat. And Sean is pumped that Lasseter is still on the crazy train. Yeah, they're they're pretty excited. Um, Lassiter's like, no, bro, you're not coming with us. Spencer, I want nothing to do with you. You, we are not comrades. We are not partners. We are nothing. Sean says, what about amigos? Homeboys? Platonic soulmate? No. (laughs) But he says it, I wrote weird no. I believe that Lassiter and Sean might be platonic soulmates. It's the yin and yang of it all. Yes. Yes. That's exactly (laughs) it. They're, they're such opposites of one another that that creates this, like, attraction. The platonic soulmate of it all. <laughs> let's, let's not forget that our Lassiter also hated me at first. This is very true. <laughs> Jamie couldn't stand me when we first met. Um, I don't think it had as much to do with me as Lassiter's hatred of Sean does with Sean. Mm-hmm. But, you know. <laughs> Sean and Gus are not allowed on this boat. But who do they see? boat. None other than Henry. And Henry is not going out to look for the shark. Oh, totally not. He's just, uh, he's going out looking for some marlin. That's fully the truth. Uh, absolutely. There's definitely a joke about marlin wanes here, but I didn't catch it completely. Oh, so he says, uh, Henry says marlin. Sean says, wanes? It's about time. Somebody's got to stop him before he makes another white chicks. And then the scene ends with Gus going, white chicks was hilarious. <laughs> So I appreciated all of that. <laughs> Lassiter and Juliet are together. And the assumption that they're fighting about is basically that Lassiter is either a bad detective or a bad fisherman in Juliet's eyes. Yeah, because he's upset that it, their trip out to catch the shark was a failure. And Juliet's like, this is not because you're a bad detective. Not at all. It's just that you're not a very good... And Lester's like, what? Fisherman? Are you impinging on my skill as a fisherman? Listen, fishing is a top five skill of mine, right after profiling and (laughs) skee-ball. Okay, so in this episode, Sean says a lot of Lassie-like things, and Lassie says a lot of Sean-like things. Yes! And this was one of them. I was like, this is a Sean thing. I definitely caught a couple of times where I was like, wow, Sean, that's very Lassiter of you to say. Oh, there's a big one that comes up yeah. later. That's it's a it's a direct Lassie has said or would say something mm-hmm. exactly like this. Jules says, "Listen, we should just bring in an expert." And Lester's like, "I suggest you shut it." Wow. Jules just says, "Wow." <laughs> and Lester's immediately like, "I'm sorry. I'm dehydrated." <laughs> Gus comes into the psych office and he has his pharmaceutical bag with him because i wrote pharmaceuticals in case we haven't seen that in two years <laughs> <laughs> gus said that he needs to get back to his route because they haven't had any paying gigs in a long time but sean's like no man i think this uh shark attack's gonna work out i'm pretty sure i found the knife that woody drew on the person yeah and gus is like whoa whoa, whoa. you're doing actual police work right now the website that Sean is on is called shawknives.com and Shaw was the name of the guy who played 
the main character in the original Jaws. It's a shark tooth fillet knife. Fancy. Uh, Sean said, me doing real police work, stranger things have happened. Name one. Michelle Pfeiffer dated Fisher Stevens, and then he actually cheated on her. I had to look up who Fisher Stevens was. He was the guy who played the shrink that Phoebe dates briefly on Friends, who diagnoses all her friends and then everybody hates him. Yeah, he, uh, he was shooting up there, wasn't he? Not like, but like, he was out of his <laughs> Like baller. Car, I yeah, yeah, this, uh, this guy, the audacity, the audacity of men. <laughs> like, <laughs> they look oh, at Fisher the television. Stevens, we don't miss you. They see Henry, and Henry has caught the shark. So, cut to Henry's house. Henry's eating a big old bowl of fruit standing in his kitchen. I truly believe that he is eating pineapple. We, we talked about this at length before we started recording, you guys, and I vehemently disagree because I eat a lot of mango and what he's eating looks to me more like mango and then other pieces in the bowl look like melons to me. Here's the argument that I did not give to you earlier because I wanted to save it for the podcast. For what other reason would he be standing there eating fruit besides it being a pineapple? Because Henry doesn't eat fruit. Henry eats steaks. So here, okay, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a in-show thing. It's a, a broader thing I've noticed, especially on shows like uh, Friends and Schitt's Creek and things like that. When people have to be eating in a scene, it's likely they're going to be eating salad or fruit salad or something like that because it's easy to just like take a bite of that and gesture with that on a fork without messing up the continuity. So I, I think that fruit in a scene usually serves that purpose if it's not like a whole pineapple but why why he doesn't have to be eating in that scene like that's my argument he could easily be well, eating <laughs> he could easily be doing anything else just like pounding steaks ready for the grill yeah. like <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know i just when i saw it i saw corbin bernson eating mango mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> we'll get another pineapple later um sean was like, dude, I need to see this shark. I don't know why, but I wrote Gus sus head tilt tooth sound. So like, I know what Gus is doing, but I don't remember why he's making that sound at Henry. Is this the, the teeth teeth thumbology reference? Well, this is before, like right before that because Henry says something, oh, it was a total accident while I was doing like Marlin and I accidentally hooked the shark instead. And then Gus puts his chin in the air and he makes it sound like, come on, son. And he's like, dude, no, <laughs> I'm not lying. It was just serendipity that I was there. So then Sean's like, but we really need to see the shark. Gus and I have an Iggy Thumpology experiment we need, we need it for. That we're doing in our treehouse lab. <laughs> Sean, the study of fish is called ichthyology. Sean's like, ah, uh, yes, I will add that to the, my list of funny words. Uh, right with avuncular and mangrove. They're like, dude, we need to see his teeth. We need to see the shark. Yeah, we have to check it for uh, matching a particular bite. And then Lassie enters and they go, Detective Dipstick? Oh, Henry says that. Mm -hmm. It's before, it's, no, it's before Lassie comes in. He's like, what, are you helping on this thing with Detective Dipstick? Sean's like, I need to see it. He checks the fridge. Of course it's not in the fridge, Sean. It's a giant shark. It is at an undisclosed location. Sean instantly psychs out, uh, observes a bill laying out for Sharp's storage. And he does this little psych out in Henry's kitchen to Henry. I'm getting it's something. It's not, I'm seeing something. Not doll. <laughs> Sharp storage disclosed. Henry is aghast. Did you just pretend to be psychic to me? Force of habit. And I was like, right, because you're both actually psychic. <laughs> <laughs> he has the shark somewhere on ice because there is a photographer coming to take a picture of him with it for a magazine tomorrow. Magazine? What is it? Fish Digest? I just wrote fish puns. I don't have any of the other ones. Oh, it's not all fish puns. Um, Sean says Fish Digest. Gus says Bald Guys Quarterly. And Sean says Coot's Life? <laughs> like old coot. <laughs> <laughs> In comes Lassiter. He's mad. I feared it would be he a Spencer who got to this shark before me. 
I just thought it would be the other one. How dare you? I should be offended. Gus? Gus. Compliment to you, insult to your dad. Well executed, too, Fister. <laughs> so Sean's like, it's official. Let's go. There's something about uh, coming to him as a father, like like last year. Oh, I'm as a fisherman and a father. Yeah. As a police officer and a father. He should have said fisherman instead of father. I just. It was very confusing, um, so I wanted to address it. It doesn't get resolved. Henry's also confused. He's like, what do you know about being a father? And the scene just ends. All four of them are on their way to uh, find this this shark, but they end up having to break in because they can't find the guy with the key. Locker thing at a storage place. Don't you have your own key? So again, I'm making an assumption here, <laughs> but my assumption is that the guy who should have the key is knocked out in the corner somewhere because of what we're about to find out next. No, no. I mean, when I rented a storage facility during like a moving thing, uh, I had my own key. That's a good point. I didn't have to find a person. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I totally think that, you know, he has been incapacitated. Um, they break in. No shark. Sean rubs it in Lassie's face. Oh, Sean kind of giggles. Lassiter's aghast. Sean says, I take absolutely no pleasure from your beflusterment at this moment. Okay, like a little bit of pleasure. But <laughs> I'm on your side. <laughs> Henry and Lassie start to argue about who has a bigger issue here. Is it Henry because the, the shark is missing? Is it Lassiter because Lassiter's detective dipstick? Yada, yada, yada. Sean sees a trail of barely melting ice. And he's like, dude, we need to follow this. Also, there's blood in that ice, so. Whoever took it is likely nearby. They're going to track so a shark on land. Which seems easier than doing it in the ocean. There's a reference to Shabby, who we remember from Shabby the Sea Lion, the episode. Yeah, Sean tracked him to the middle of the big blue. And Gus says, no, you stole a guy's coordinates. Sean's like, I know where it's at because he sees the birds circling. Just give me your keys. They will not be driving because that is a company car. There isn't a reference to that, but that's the assumption. And then Sean um, hollers for the old men. Who have not been listening to him. He has been trying to be re the reasonable one. It's very jarring. But um, he finally gets them on board. He tells Gus to warm up his super sniffer. We're going to need it. They use it to find the shark. Like, they find the shark. But it's down the road. Apparently they've run some red lights to get to it, we find out. <laughs> Gus is kind of smelling around, trying to figure out where to go. Sean is doing a very bad job of directing them to wherever Gus is kind of nodding. Eventually, they all smell it, and they find the shark, only for it to roll on top of Detective Lassiter. Like, that's very dangerous. It could accidentally, like, decapitate him with those teeth if it falls on him just the right way. <laughs> no, but um, I'm okay. I wrote, ew, but, juicy. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It was really disgusting. Lassie gets the the shark off of him and goes, no, I'm okay, but thank you very much for helping me get the big dead shark off me. Sean kind of psychs out that it's like too late. Lassiter also sees here that the shark has been cut open and we're like, ah, yes, if there was evidence, it is now gone. Lassiter goes, this smells like a cover up. Enter Dr. Kimberly Phoenix, who is a doctor at the oceanographer department at some university that I did not write down. She's also a shark she just says, She just says at the university. <laughs> um, yes. Juliet called her. Um, you must be Detective Dipstick. <laughs> and then this is Jerry Ryan from Star Trek Voyager. Yes. And... She's like, hey, don't worry. I know the press can be really snarky. I've had my fair share of bad press. Like, I feel you, bro. But also, you got the wrong shark. They want to know why or how they found them, how she found them. And she points out that she's been following Henry. Well, yeah, she followed them from the storage place. She was the one beeping as they ran through all the red lights. Uh, she's very impressed by Henry. and They have a flirt off. They do. Something about, I'm so happy that it was a cop that found it instead of one of those um, people just looking for the reward. And Henry says that he was just trying to keep the water safe for the children. And a divorced man needs to build his nest egg. Did you just subtly drop in divorced in a conversation to an apparently single woman? 
Did you just drop in single woman to a conversation? So heavy flirt. I wrote ew. But Laster's like, no, no, no. I did my research. This is the right type of shark. This is a, a man eater, rare for these waters, blah, blah, blah. The doc's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely a tiger shark. But the guy you're looking for was much more likely a very large 17 footer, not this puny little nine foot guy. Henry takes offense to that. But um, he still continues to flirt with her, to which Gus notes, I think your dad is totally in there. Sean is questioning reality at this moment. But Sean also likes to pick up women at crime scenes, so not that big of a change. Yeah, Gus is definitely like, mm. Man, he's got every play in your book. Or have you been using his playbook all along? It's not a book, it's more of a binder. So we go to the lab with Woody, and Dr. Kimberly Phoenix comes with us. Um, we found some more body parts. Gus is heaving in the corner. He's just like, <laughs> Woody's just like, breathe, fellow, breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Because he unveils a leg. Um, there's some ankle marks, meaning he was possibly tethered to something. Um, and something else that's weird, on one of his like wounds, there's completely different DNA that they found. That means that... There was a second victim, and it's very, very dramatic. Yeah, like the shark had somebody else's DNA in his mouth when he bit this guy's foot off. We go to the other university lab with Dr. Kimberly Phoenix, and she starts talking about all the variables that add up to predict a shark attack, like where they'll be and why they would go for a human at that point, stuff like that. In comes Henry. He brought her a coffee. Sean psychs out on a ton of stuff in the office, none of which I caught very well, but it was like maps and currents and ideas and stuff circled and all kinds of things. Yeah, and those will come up later. But she's like, look, if I, ha if I have more time, I can probably pinpoint where it's likely the shark will be. I just have to like study the things a little bit closer. Lassie's like, it's time for us to get some good equipment and go catch ourselves the actual shark. Before some idiot in a sea bus rolls over it with a propeller. Lassie, I've never been more in love with you than I am in this mo moment. You are virtually insane. <laughs> like, the boys are very on board with this Lassie. They are. <laughs> the reward is now up to $50,000. Uh, Henry is pumped, and then he essentially dismisses the boys and moves on. This freaking mayor. Okay, can I just say, who is this psychopath? Do we get to meet them? How are they keeping their job? Yeah, I don't, I still don't understand why you would put a $50,000 reward out. Even if a shark killed two people, why would you send people looking for the shark? So we get this in the next scene at the press conference and it's very like Jaws because this is very similar. Like the shark has attacked people, but it's a big holiday weekend and they have to keep the beaches open because it's tourist season. This is where they make their like bank that keeps them like all through the off seasons and stuff but of course jaws i'm pretty sure takes place on the east coast oh anyway it's like where where places shut down you know for three seasons out of the year and then they have tourist season and then they you know make their egg mm -hmm. so there's a little aside while laster's talking at this press conference about the yes the rewards been up to help keep the beaches open for the holiday weekend blah 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 i wrote like jaws and then Jules is trying to get his attention as he's blathering on and on and on to all these all these middle school dropouts that are about to go out and try and catch the shark. Once Juliet finally gets his attention, he's like she's like, "Dude, we found a missing guy who matches the description. We found his car. His car is in this parking lot." We find out he's a web millionaire from Seattle and uh, his name is Dante Pavan. He is an activist against just about everything. Everything from overfishing to illegal fishing to blah, 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 blah. Moral of the story. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a conservationist with a crusade. Like, he's all against all these ocean destroyers. And the car that they're, like, walking towards and looking in is 1,000% like a dark gray Prius. Like, this tech billionaire or not yeah tech billionaire from seattle's driving a prius because eco-friendly <laughs> the guy never rented a boat he never owned a boat 
Um, he once put himself in a net to try to stop people from illegal fishing. He's chained himself. He to... jumped into a fishing net they were pulling in, full of a catch. He chained himself to a buoy I mean... <laughs> and to an oil tractor trailer. And Lassiter um... starts having Sean flashbacks. Yes, he fully psychs out on the ankle marks of the guy because this guy is famous for chaining himself to oil tanker anchors and things like that. Um, Jules says he's like known for his really dramatic protests and causing a scene, and he's part of this extreme. He's the leader of this extreme group called Oceans First. We find out. Lassiter comes to his senses, and he no longer needs the bark the shark because they only needed the shark to identify the body. Now he has um, the facts. Sean and Gus have caught up to him, and he's like telling him that he's like bowing out of this you know shark hunt and all this extra evidence searching and sean's like oh come on this is so thin this is not enough information and why would somebody have opened up henry shark lasser's like listen i'm not i'm done listening to you and he's i wrote back to ignoring the clues that don't fit in his paint by numbers police routine oh. i was like be a better cop sean's teaching you <laughs> Gus wants to know if Sean wants to go home or if he wants to watch your dad hit on the doctor lady. Okay, this is where Sean has a Lassiter line. He says, I'd rather dip my jewels in honey and go on a bear, bear watch. watch. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'd rather. I'd rather. <laughs> Not only I'd rather, but I'd rather and a bear. Yeah, which has come up before. It's a very lassie thing to do. Um, Sean's Sean says, like, We're not there done. is more to this. There is something in that shark. We need to find it. We go back into the press hall or whatever that was. And it, it, Sean's struggling to make a screeching sound on the whiteboard because it's not a chalkboard. Um, so he grabs a mic and he just goes as he pretends to scratch and just gets everybody's attention. And then he does a full Jaws quote. Like this is a Jaws crowd conference line it felt that he very starts out with. jazzy so I, that makes sense i don't have the line but it makes sense it's very funny he's like you all know me you know what i do blah 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 <laughs> and then everybody's like no we don't <laughs> i'm a psychic jack check the newspaper F page five or later or, or maybe on the back sometimes in the personals yeah so he goes like it i didn't write any of this down because he just oh, goes through a bunch of his I credentials did. like his like 20 of his cases shabby found a boat at night Four months ago, a guy walks into the office and he's like, guess what? I'm a late, I'm a lichen. Gus was like, you're made of seaweed? I said, no, Gus, he's a werewolf. There's a reference to the Civil War episode to Denzel Washington in Glory. The tennis girl, the football player. You could read the book when I learn how to type. And then there's only one guy left in the room. Yeah, old guy. The guy we met when Lasseter was trying to rent a boat. He's the only one left at the end. And he's like... Since you're still here, I'm guessing that I've brought you over to my way of thinking or something. Tanner is going to take them out on the boat with him to help them find to help him find the shark. As they're headed to the boat, there are references to sea shanties, Dramamine, Leverage, TiVo, Sean not being able to shut up, swabbing the deck, and that's all I've got. But Leverage is a good one. So the Leverage is a good one because our guest star who plays Kimberly, Dr. Kimberly Phoenix, we have to put in her credential. Um, her name is Jerry Ryan, and she had a recurring role as Grifter Tara Cole in Leverage from 2008. Oh, uh, not too long, like around this time-ish. So the Leverage co-creator John Rogers has joked that in his mind, Sean Spencer and the Leverage character Elliot Spencer, um, played by Christian Kane, must be cousins like <laughs> so looks like i'm gonna be trying to find how to watch leverage and see what that's all about yeah i don't know what leverage is but now i'm intrigued so <laughs> christian kane is a ridiculous looking character he's been in other stuff but i'm very excited to revisit it's a good concept for a show but i haven't seen that much of it there are dead fish just kind of sitting there and um old iron stomach goes i need to get off this boat which i think is a jaws thing where the line is we're gonna need a bigger boat ah uh, and gus goes i'm gonna need to get off this boat gus don't be leon from the like a prayer video or any for that matter gus is assigned chum duty by the old guy and he wheeze gags he's just always doing this <laughs> <laughs> captain william tanner i did write down his name it's william tanner 
is at the helm and said, all right, magician, where do we go? <laughs> Psychic equals magic. I love this. Um, Sean just spouts nonsense. It's all fart jokes. <laughs> I didn't write them down. <laughs> silent but deadly. It is he who smelt it, and it is also he who dealt it. And then he, and then he actually psychs out. Yeah. He's remembering what the doctor said all- about all those different variables. And he sees like a little map where there are like a seal's mating ground marked and he's like, oh, oh, it's at the reef. I, I see a, a harem of seals that has been there to mate and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, old guy goes, oh, yeah, there is a pot of seals over there. John's like, oh, and yes, then, now um, you're into it, but I believe it's called a harem of seals. Ah, uh, I've heard it both ways. Sean's face is like shock and dismay. It's just like, what? <laughs> I love it. That is a wonderful, I've heard it. Sean's just, Sean, Gus is down on the deck, just gagging and chumming the water. <laughs> At the Santa Barbara Police Department, Lassiter is wondering why this guy could have accidentally been in this place where he died. He's like, he's trying to figure out the stunt protest, what accident occurred, put the pieces that he thinks must fit together, even though there's no evidence to that. And then Jules is like looking a little bit like haphazard. And she's like, oh God, I don't know. Maybe we gave up on murder too soon. She found a clue in the paper. That is not, that rag is not allowed in this precinct. Lassiter says a whole bunch of other things. Again, I did not write them down. I don't know if you did or not. He did a, I'd rather too. Oh, good. Go for it. Cause he's back to his old self. He says, I'd rather French kiss a hobo than read that trash ever again, essentially. Lassiter gets very, very angry. He he gets all of his anger out. And then finally he like takes a deep breath and he's like, huh, that was very lethargic. All right, let's see what it says. Cathartic? Cathartic. (laughs) Did I say lethargic? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, lethargic? Cathartic. Cathartic. Lethargic. 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 That makes sense to me. I've heard it both ways. The uh, <laughs> the note says, stop your illegal fishing practices or I will. Yeah, they've just published this dude's letter, I guess. Juliet's like, so he threatened everyone, but we need to figure out who was first on his hit list. We're back at the boat and um, Sean does not want to chum the water because he needs a free hand so that he can put it against his head and act like a psychic. Old guy is calling Gus names and screaming at Gus to chum faster. And I'm just like, this is not a good look. (laughs) Like the one person on the boat you're putting to work and the way you're verbally abusing them. This looks like the optics are real bad for old guy. But as we'll find out, he's kind of a piece of trash in every way possible. So yeah. Sean is asking why Tanner can't chum the water and he had told Gus that he had a bad wing whatever that means I don't speak salty fisherman I just really like that (laughs) line Sean's like I need quiet for my psychic mix maybe I need to lay down oh and then captain threw a fish at Sean to tell him to get back to work I guess I don't know no Gus threw a chunk of fish at him oh and now Sean just smacks him in the hoodie yeah, he smacks Sean in the hoodie. He goes into the cabin, takes off the hoodie, and then he finds all these papers and then a box of knives I wrote. <laughs> um, the letters, some of them are from Oceans First, the extreme group that Dante Pavan was the head of. And the letter itself says, we will shut you down. Sean also calls Henry because... He wants Henry to find the doctor lady so that she can give Sean more pointers on where to tell the salty fisherman where to find the shark. But it turns out that Henry is at his his own house, and so is the doctor. He is not doing anything. He's not talking to her. He's not helping. And he hangs up on Sean. We get a cut to the captain sitting at the bench fishing, and Sean continues to snoop through the, um, through the boathouse or whatever it's called. Gus goes into the cabin to find Sean, and Sean presents him with the evidence, and Gus is like, this is circumstantial. This is not enough. There's um, two of those shark tooth fillet knives. One is very, very large, and one is very, very small, and Sean says that he is going to trust his instincts, and Gus says, where is the medium knife? It's probably inside of a shark somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh-oh. <laughs> Sean does that with the knife. Um, <laughs> Sean says, I know who the killer is. And Gus is like, well, who is it? And Sean says, we're on his boat. We hear Captain screaming, Sean, Sean, I've hooked him. I've caught him. And Sean grabs one of the knife and Sean and Gus run out to Captain, Captain Tanner. He grabs the small one and old guy is like, Gus, get the dynamite. And Gus is like, no way. We have to bring it in. Um, it, you know, we need it. And the old guy is like, we've got to destroy it before it destroys us. Sean sees that there is bandage on Tanner's arm, hence the bad wing that we heard about earlier, and does a, a full-on recap. Tanner was the other victim. The shark actually bit him while they were struggling because Tanner threw the now dead guy into the water and he must have gotten a hold of him in the meantime. The guy does not want us to catch the coat. The guy does not want us to catch the shark because of what's in his belly. And Sean's like, you know what, forget this and cuts the line so that Captain cannot catch him. And the captain is like, what the heck do you think you're doing? And he gets up and like he's threatening Sean. And Sean is like, dude, I'm the one with the knife. And the old guy's like, well, if that shark couldn't stop me, then what makes you think you and that like throwing more insults at Gus? And then all of a sudden, Gus pings him in the head with some kind of a tank. Yeah, like it looks like an like tank. A I don't oxygen know. tank or a scuba tank or whatever. Um, Gus starts ranting. <laughs> <laughs> Gus is real mad. And then he's like, how dare you make fun of me for, for having a gag reflex? It's a sign that I'm highly evolved. I did a little bit of research. And what I found out was... Dude, dude, dude. He's out. He's down. Fist bump. And uh, anyone know how to drive this boat? So we go to the SBPD. And the front cover of the courier says... I wrote psychic front page, Sean Talassi. Oh, make sure Chief gets this. It says psychic catches killer, solves shark mystery. And Sean says, you know, I don't write headlines, but if I did, I would have added and does so with foppish aplomb. You know, that's right. <laughs> Sean's like, no, no, no. Read the article. We did you justice. I wanted to say, Sean, Sean looks at Lassiter and goes, I wanted to say you were this close, man. This Little close. tiny fingers. He and Gus yeah, he and Gus are both holding it up. He's like, you know what? You were at the prep precipice with us, next to us, but you just wouldn't jump. It should have been you right here on the front page with us, but right behind Gus, because you're taller and a little bit less important. <laughs> Lasseter says, I'm over it. I don't want to be you. I don't want to throw out five crazy theories just to get one right. I am a police detective. And police yes. detectives do not surmise that banks are knocked over by groups of angry cats with laser beams. No, no, no. I never said they were angry. Just following orders. Okay, before we move on. Has that happened? Not to my knowledge, but it just reminded me of an SNL digital short with Andy Samberg. Laser I don't cats. know what that is. I mean, I do know what you're saying, but I don't know of the, of the digital short. But I want to see the episode where... Sean makes a reference to angry, angry cats with laser beams. I never said angry. Just following <laughs> orders. <laughs> cats on a mission, Alexis. Lassiter is just like, I'm okay with being me. And you guys can go before I say something uncouth. No, no. He says, I do good police work and people respect me for it. Gus says, name two. Sean says, name one. <laughs> <laughs> But Gus leaves another paper on Lassie's desk, just just because. They go, bye, Lassie. And Lassie sits See down. You later, buddy. As soon as they're gone, Lassie sits down to read it. <laughs> of course he does. Henry and Dr. Kim are with Sean and Lassiter again. And uh, they are at the psych office. Wait, are with- Sean and Lassiter? Dang, Flabbit. Henry and Dr. Kim <laughs> came to the psych office, uh, or, or, or are in the psych office, because um, Sean doesn't lock the door. And they're looking for sunscreen. Yeah, Gus hits Sean when he finds out how they got in. Henry says, we need sunscreen for protection from the sun. And also, the doctor's smile. Sean just kind of like, is okay, like whatever. Uh, let me give you the sunscreen, it's in the other room. And so they head into the other room and have a little aside conversation. Where Sean is very happy for him. Sean grabs the sunblock and he's holding it in such a way that you can see that it's like a zoomed in picture of a 
pineapple as the label. He tells um, Henry he's very happy for him. He's happy he found someone he likes. And good luck with her. Henry says, yeah, yeah, she's great. But I'm not forgetting. I'm a fisherman at heart. And she can help me find out where all the marlin are. Very crafty. Henry says, later, alligator. Grabs the sunblock and leaves. Sean just stays for a moment and then does this deep, deep sigh. Followed by al- alligator? <laughs> Very confused. Sean just got shawned by Henry. <laughs> He did. Oh my god, he totally Absolutely did. Absolutely just got shawned. <laughs> uh... Although there's no actual cheap fic in this episode, um, and just a little tiny bit of buzz, I love all the Henry in the episode, but I definitely love the um, the trope swap, like the character trope swap that goes on so, so much in this episode. It's just so clever, and they do it so seamlessly. Like, when I was watching the episode, like, the first three times, I probably didn't catch it. But I caught it, and I caught it this time because we are obviously looking for stuff like that. But, like, it it was, it was flowed so nicely, but it was such a nice, like, feeling, and you kind of laughed at those moments, and oh, it was just so beautiful. Because every character on this show does a really good job of having their own tone. So when some characters are doing things that the other characters usually do and taking on that tone, like, you're just like... Wait, what? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not how it always is. It's not like just amalgamous people doing things. Like everybody has their own personality. So when Henry's doing the Sean thing, flirting and picking up women at crime scenes and <laughs> and <laughs> Lassie is, is, is throwing out wild theories and Sean is suddenly doing in-depth police work yeah. and, and running down leads. like <laughs> And um, Julia is just sort of like, being her reasonable self, like, it's not pointing to this yet. If it points to this, I'll explore it more. But, like, I'm not going off crazy at the jump. Like, so I feel like she's, like, a really good, like, baseline. She's like, no, I'm going to do the police work right. I'm going to follow the things that don't fit once I'm convinced they don't fit. Like, <laughs> it, it's just a good episode. Like, when I saw that this was the episode last week when we were talking, uh, and I saw that this was the episode, I was like, oh, this is a good one. This is a funny episode. There's no plot. There's no plot pushing in this episode whatsoever. I think there is. I think Sean teaching Lassiter to do better at police work and like, and like look at things with a different perspective sometimes. I think that's growth for Lassie's character arc. Okay. I agree with you on that one. It's, it's shallow, but I agree. It's there. I'm just so excited. (laughs) I, I, I'm not that excited for next week, honestly. Like I, I kind of. I'm afraid of the tone switch from this to another Yin episode. It's like, it's our season dark, four yeah. finale coming up, you guys. It's going to be dark. Yeah, it's very jarring. It's very it's very scary. And we do have some, some culminating. Well, we have a number of culminating moments that we've been leading up to throughout this season. We put some yeah, pins in some we have things s- really, really early on in the series that come back. In this next episode. Oh, it's going to be, oh, it's going to feel like a lot. I just, I have to like prepare. (laughs) Well, I'm excited for it. uh, Even though we are coming up on the end of a season, which means that we'll likely be taking a season break. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of pumped to record this one, this next one, actually. It, it is like you said, jarring, but it's, I think it's going to be fun. All right. We'll get there soon. All right. I am Alexis. Are we going to get to sing sea shanties or any other kind of shanties? And I'm Kaylee. Stop right there, you backwoods hill people. There is evidence in that shark. And this has been... To To the the Blueberry! Blueberry! Psych out.